Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to the second day of Chessable Masters 2020 quarterfinals. I would like to show you the only decisive game of day two. So uh, Hikaru Nakamura, who's gonna play as white, he gonna face Ding Liren, who's gonna play as black. Uh, and you know, we had nine games that day so uh, eight of them were drawn and five of them were drawn by Anish Giri believe me or not there are a lot of memes there are a lot of tweets about that how to you know uh, win the match without winning a single game so that's pretty funny if you are interested stay until end I will show you the the all the scores what just happened and I will show you the scores of the quarterfinals and now, without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. We have e4 by Hikaru Nakamura, e5, knight on f3, knight on c6, bishop on b5, Rui Lopez on the board, and now knight on f6, Berlin defense. d3, bishop on c5, and this position actually was reached many times already this year in 2020. It looks like the most popular opening. Uh, and if you are interested, if you want to master that, uh, I think you can check the playlist where I explain a lot of games, especially Magnus Carlsen who wins this opening as black, who wins as white. So there are a lot of games. The link is over there. So if you are interested, you know, just check all of these games and you will get the idea what position you can get here. Uh, and now white have the choice playing something like C3. This is the one of the idea to control D4 or take the, the knight. These are the most popular ideas. Castle is also possible, however, it leads to knight on d4, okay? Attacking the bishop, attacking the knights, uh, and after knight on d4, bishop on d4, c3, bishop b6, uh, the players have a very similar structure, however, they play without the, the knights. So this is why we have usually bishop on c6 here. Uh, d takes on c6, and now just remember you cannot take this knight because queen d4 uh, you know threatening the checkmate and taking the the knight so uh, that would be losing for white so castle first and now knight d7 defending that pawn knight b on d2 so this knight heading to c4 which is pretty normal in uh, Rui Lopez uh, and now castle by uh, Ding Liren knight on c4 as planned and now rook on e8 as the pawn is attacked twice by both of the knights uh, we have a4 so controlling b5 now the knight cannot be really attacked i mean it can be attacked however uh, black would lose the the pawn structure so uh, a5 by Ding Liren and this position was reached on the top level many times already uh, for example b3 is one of the solid moves here uh, Vishwanathan Anand played it this couple of times also king on h1 moving from this pin uh, and preparing f4 f4 is a very strong move it was played by for example Fabiano Caruana a couple of times however in this position we have 21st century, so Hikaru Nakamura goes for h4. h4, uh, there is a one problem with this move because uh, now g4 is quite weak. I mean, it still can be, you know, played with the, with the f3 in the future to control that, but then we're gonna have weak g3. So h4, it looks like very strong move, especially in the 21st century where everybody plays that. However, always keep in mind that it, you know, always gives you some weaknesses. We have knight on b6, now uh, challenging this this knight, as this knight is too powerful on c4, uh, but uh, Hikaru Nakamura doesn't want to exchange it, and he plays knight on e3. But the Liren said, I don't like your knight, your knight, for example, controls f5, if I want to play f5, I cannot, so let's just exchange. And now, of course, bishop on e3, is not the greatest idea because of this pin and this pin is a very annoying keep in mind that white doesn't have the the knight for example uh, to support the knight uh, and if the queen is moved wherever then exchanging that would open the the position of the king so that would be very annoying this is why we have f takes on e3 and it's a pretty okay move because now this pawn for example controls the key squares here 
okay so uh, if this knight would like to go for example to one of this outpost it's not possible also uh, now c3 d4 it's possible to to attack in the center so uh, white have quite massive pawn center knight on d7 by dingliren bishop on d2 and now knight on f6 so uh, bringing the knight to the king side and now knight on h2 and now g4 would be very very strong idea it would start a dangerous attack uh, for example queen on f3 and now uh, and then after the the pawn moves to to g5 and the knight moves this battery would work really great on f7 so we have h5 by ding liren not allowing that and also creating some ideas for the outpost for for black so as you see uh, without the pawn without f pawn now white gonna have two weaknesses okay uh, but also uh, black gonna have the weakness here but uh, it's you see seems like black already got the initiative here we have queen on f3 creating this battery um, and facing f7 so this knight cannot move for now so first queen on e7 we have bishop on c3 bringing this bishop on this diagonal and also preparing d4 so Dingliren uh, doesn't like it, he plays c5 uh, and now instead of playing d4 it's possible af but after um, e takes on d4, e takes on d4, knight takes on e4. This pawn is without the protection, the pawn on f7 is, is, is defended, uh, also the bishop is under attack so uh, it's not really great, okay? Rook a on e1 is possible but then f5 and everything is fine with the, with the black's position. Actually, Actually, the engine suggests that is uh, much better for black. So uh, d4 would be just too early. So we have b3 uh, strengthening this position for now and trying to uh, remaneuver some of the pieces, improve the positions of the pieces. We have knight on g4. Uh, and now bishop on e1 as the pawn was under attack uh, so now it's defended we have rook on a6 so as you see ding liren brings the rook to attack and now the rook can come to the to the g file can come to the f file uh, and ding liren get more and more initiative uh, we have bishop on g3 and now rook on g6 and now Hikaru said, okay, it's enough, you have too many pieces here, so let's exchange this, this knight as it's too active over there. So we have knight on g4, bishop on g4, and now queen on f2, so the butter is still pointing on f7. Uh, we have rook on d8, so any, any d4 ideas are not really possible still. Uh, king on h2 and now b6. So Ding Liren put his pawns on the dark squares uh, and he wants this bishop actually, you know, to, to just move freely um, on the light squares if needed. We have queen on d2 uh, and now f6. So even more pawns are on the dark squares and it looks like it's, you know, uh, it's great because uh, white gonna have the, the bishop on the dark square. But this bishop is actually pretty blocked uh, and doesn't have really the possibility of... Um, of improving the position so far we have queen on c2 so now hikaru nakamura is waiting as black still have more initiative rook on d6 and now rook on f2 preparing to to double the rooks on the f file and now king on h7 rook a on f1 as planned and now bishop on e6 so as i said this bishop now can move freely on the on the light squares we have rook on f3 so hikaru nakamura all he can do is is just wait he doesn't have chances to make any you know breakthrough and um, with the pawns maybe here but it's not ready yet uh, we have rook on g4 and it looks like this rook uh, with the move of f6 is a bit trapped over there uh, but for now it's actually pointing on h4 it's not like a threat or something uh, but it's possible to imagine some some uh, exchange uh, sacrifice especially that the queen is quite far so queen on e1 um, hikaru you know 
prefers to be safe over there uh, and now we have queen on e8 so here is the ding liren plan now he want to bring the queen here uh, and uh, put the pressure on the bishop so it's good to have the queen uh, not far from the king's position as that would be dangerous we have king on h1 now queen on g6 as planned and now queen on f2 creating the aliehin gun however it's not really dangerous as this pawn structure uh, is really really solid and cannot be attacked any anyhow it's it's very difficult to even imagine that we have queen on e8 rook on a1 so as you see now both sides try to improve the position of the pieces uh, and try to um, remaneuver to get uh, some possibilities um, of, of counterplay however Ding Liren still has the initiative and he has a slightly better position we have king on g8 and actually Magnus Carlsen who was watching this game he posted uh, on Twitter this king uh, is moving to b7 this this king is moving to b7 and then the attack on the king's position will be possible so this is how Magnus estimates that position we have bishop on h2 and Hikaru tries to set up a little trap uh, rook on g6 we have queen on f1 and now queen on d7 uh, rook on b1 waiting uh, rook on g4 now going after the pawn uh, and here rook on g3 so uh, Hikaru say okay uh, you can take my pawn but actually of course uh, everybody I hope see that that's the trap and that would be you know not winning the pawn but losing the pawn because after rook on g3 queen f6 winning the winning the pawn rook on g4 and then queen e5 as this pawn was uh, not protected so uh, of course white white would have the winning position here uh ding Liren, of course is too experienced for that so we have rook on g3 exchanging this this rook which were trapped over there uh, and now bishop on g3 we have bishop on g4 so this bishop is happy over there it's you know uh, cannot be removed from that position and now rook on a1 so Hikaru Nakamura is still waiting as he cannot do do much about that and it's all uh, up to Ding Liren how how it's gonna end uh, we have queen on e6 queen on f2 uh, and now king on f7 so Ding Liren starts to remaneuver his king as Magnus Carlsen said maybe he saw uh, his tweet and Hikaru Nakamura didn't I'm not sure about that but I'm, I'm, of course I'm joking because the players uh, cannot have a uh, open Open any other applications uh, on their computers and if you watch at their uh, at their screens uh, you can see always the cameras which uh, filming from behind so uh, everything is monitored if anybody is in the room if they watch at something else on the another monitor so um, that's you know just a joke uh, we have rook on f1 and now king on e8 as planned queen on e1 king on d7 now queen on c3 king on c8 king on g1 and now king b7 as planned and now rook on f2 we have queen on e8 so remaneuvering the the rest of pieces now rook on f1 wa still waiting uh, queen on g6 uh, and now king on h2 bishop on e6 and now queen on e1 queen on g4 uh, and now queen on c3 bishop on d7 and now queen on e1 bishop on c6 so moving the bishop now on this diagonal and trying some some new ideas uh, however queen on f2 and now rook on d8 rook on a1 rook on h8 uh, queen on f3 asking to exchange the the, the queens however uh, Ding Liren is not interested he was planning to bring the the, the rook and try to put some pressure uh, on the king side maybe then bring you know f5 and with this bishop could be quite interesting however we have queen on e6 rook on f1 and now rook on h6 as planned uh, queen on e2 uh, and now queen on e8 uh, queen on d1 this time rook on h8 so Ding Liren uh, changed his mind he see that he cannot do anything here as the queen is still staying on this diagonal so he has to find other plan we have rook on h8 
bishop on e1 and now bishop on d7 king on h1 queen on g6 uh, king on h2 and now rook on d8 so going back this way and this way trying this way uh but as you see nothing works here we have bishop on g3 Queen on g4, now Ding Liren say, okay, let's exchange the queens. Uh, Hikaru said, okay, I'm fine with that. So queen on g4, bishop on g4, king on g1, and now c6. So preparing b5. Uh, so something is gonna happen. This is move number 60. And I, I think, you know, the game really starts here and it's gonna be more exciting. Uh, we have rook on a1, so now if b5 would be played, it's not really bad for black actually, because after a takes on b5, c takes on b5, rook a5, yes, the rook is over there, but bishop d1 gonna, you know, win all of these pawns, uh, and black gonna have pretty good situation here. So for example, after rook on e2, rook a8, exchanging the rooks and uh, winning this pawn and as you see this bishop is still stuck over there not really easy to bring it to the game uh, and the game can continue of course d4 is possible now but probably that would be a draw with the um, uh, opposite uh, color bishop so as this is probably not the winning variation uh ding liren is not interested and first prepares that and play rook on e8 and now he gonna play b5 in the next move we have bishop on e1 and only now b5 and here uh, it looks like uh, white actually can can win um, a5 however after a takes on b5 c takes on b5 bishop on a5 uh, black would have the interesting move b4 and it looks like this bishop cannot support the, the rook anymore uh, and this king can just you know come and win the, the material however it's not so clear because after king on f1 king on c6 uh, king on e1, king b5, there is always move c4. And now if black decides to take it, then of course just exchange, and that's a very drawish situation. And if king on c6, then white can actually uh, storm the center. For example, d4, e takes on d4, e takes on d4, c takes on d4, king d2, and let's say g5, g3, uh, and this bishop cannot actually be approached by the king because uh, because these squares are controlled. So it's it's actually not so easy to actually win that. Um, the king can come to to d3, attack this pawn. The rook can come to to a4, win the pawn, and and so on. So uh, this is also uh, possible, but probably a draw. But Hikaru didn't go for this shaky variation with the bishop stuck or not stuck. It's it's difficult to say uh, over there. And he just simply play king on f1. More solid move. Uh, we have king on b6, so bringing the king also closer to the to the attack here. And now bishop on c3, uh, bringing this bishop to this diagonal. So now um, any moves with the with the pawns, for example g5, and exchanging this bishop will keep an eye on e5, which uh, can be very unpleasant. Uh, we have b4 kicking the bishop and bishop on b2 still staying on this diagonal. Rook on d8, king on e1 and now king on c7. King on d2 and now king on d6. So uh, Ding Liren remaneuvered the king now um, to the center. We have rook on f1 and now king on e6. So uh, Ding Liren plans actually to open the f file. So the king is needed to control uh, e5. We have king on e1 and now rook on g8, king on f2, and now g5, h takes on g5, f takes on g5, uh, and Ding Liren has the two pawns against against one pawn, so uh, he is closer to create some, uh, some passed pawn. We have king on g3, so now any moves like h4 are not possible because the bishop is under attack. We have rook on d8, and now rook on f2 so white controls the open f file uh, and black can try to exchange the rooks but as you see that would be a draw with the opposite colors bishops so ding liren has to find completely new idea and he played very very creative c4 c4 look at this move 
it's quite counterintuitive because c4 was you know defended twice however d takes on c4 and this rook gonna infiltrate the white position definitely the bad idea and also if you play anything else here then c3 is coming and this bishop would be would be just you know vanished it, it cannot you know enter the game anymore because this bishop is gonna be blocked with the with this own pawn uh, and this pawn gonna control d2 so this bishop would be completely out of the game so definitely uh black would find a way to to win the game so there is no much choice and hikaru nakamura plays b takes on c4 uh, and now c5 with the idea of course of bringing the bishop to attack this pawn this way or maybe this way as this is a new weakness on the light squares however it's not so easy to do it because uh, the king stays on e6 and the king cannot move to e7 because this pawn is under attack so as you see this bishop on the the long diagonal is really great and also moving the king on d6 this rook would jump to f6 and it's also uh, really great for, for white. So still, Ding Liren still have to find the way how to play. However, for now, he has the plan B3. B3, and what can you do about that? Uh, if you want to stay with the, with the rook on the open file, which makes sense, then this B3 is coming, okay? And after rook on F2, this pawn on d3 is a weakness okay and this pawn gonna fall sooner or later all of them are on the light squares so what hikaru nakamura found is rook on d2 giving up the f file giving up the f file however the game could be very very complicated uh, first, b3 is not possible now because after b3, c takes on b3 and the pawn, of course, is defended. So it's not possible. Uh, and rook on f8 is very, very shaky. Uh, actually, the engine likes the black's position, but look at this. d4, e takes on d4, e takes on d4, uh, and let's say rook f4 d5 king e7 e5 rook on c4 and it seems like it's very complicated and tricky and definitely white gonna have a huge counterplay for example here uh, e6 has to be played king on uh, d6 has to be played just to control you know um, e5 square from the bishop very tricky position so definitely Ding Liren is not interested in tricky positions. He want to, you know, play step by step and win the game uh, other way. We have Rook on C8 uh, and it's also very tricky because after D4, all of this is not possible now because C takes on D4, E takes on D4 and Rook and takes on C4. Uh, and after D5, uh, this pawn gonna fall this pawn cannot be defended uh, and then also this pawn gonna fall soon after as this bishop can just come and and pick it up so uh, it's not really possible what white should play is probably rook on f2 and after a rook on d8 just you know threefold repetition and of course uh, b3 doesn't work without the rook on d8 and attack here so it's it would be very difficult for ding liren you know to find the the way to go however hikaru nakamura plays bishop on a1 and it looks like you know normal move in the position it's still waiting however this move changed the game and it's losing move so feel free to pause the video and find the winning move for black while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? This time, rook on f8 just works. This time just works. Why? Because you cannot go back with the, with the rook. Rook on f2, h4. And as you see already, you're gonna lose the exchange and the game. And if you try something like bishop on b2, so okay, sorry about that, I'm just moving the, the bishop to b2, then rook f1 can infiltrate the position, okay? And now, whatever you play, for example, d4, 
bishop d1 this bishop is looking at a4 uh, through this x-ray uh, if you push the pawn then of course king on d6 and everything is 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 just you know locked in the center if you make the space for the rook it doesn't really work because h4 uh, and after king on h3 you're gonna get checkmated so you have to go to to h2 and after g4 uh, you can play rook on d6, king e7, even you can win this pawn. However, g3, uh, and that would be a checkmate. So you have to give up the bishop, bishop on g3, and look at this. You're gonna have seven pawns, however, it's still losing. None of them can actually um, promote. So uh, bishop on c2, losing first pawn and another pawn. If you play rook on a6, this pawn gonna promote. If you play rook on b6, you're gonna lose this pawn. Uh, the king gonna come here uh, and this pawn's never gonna promote, okay? So this is completely losing. So not really possible. Uh, d4 is the same. D4 and after rook on f1, bishop on b2, and we have the same position, bishop on d1, I just shown you all the variation here with the with the knight on c5 and the bishop, so uh, not, not really. Hikaru Nakamura tries with c3, but it's even worse, because now we have rook on f1, the same idea, bishop on b2, bishop on d1, with the attack on a4 pawn, e, without the, the pawn on c3, uh, and now after d4, we have h4, king on h2, g4, and in this position, Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game. Uh, this is even worse than that what I just shown you, because this bishop cannot even jump to e5, so checkmate is coming. If white try to uh, stop the checkmate by something like g3, it still doesn't work h3. You can play d takes on c5, open the file for the for the rook, but it doesn't really matter. Bishop f3 and checkmate is coming and you cannot do anything about that. So this is why in this position uh, Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game. And as I promised, I would like to show you also the score. So uh, here we go. Day two of quarterfinals. Ding Liren won this decisive game. Rest of the games were, were drawn. So a one point for Ding Liren and Hikaru Nakamura has to win uh, two mini matches to qualify to semi-finals. Uh, before we had the Magnus Carlsen against Fabiano Caruana. Um, quite easy win. Uh, uh, two and a half to half and also uh, Jan Nipomniasi won two and a half to half to Vladislav Artemiev but the most remarkable uh, mini match was between Alexander Grischuk and Anish Giri believe me or not Anish Giri drawn all five games and he got one point because the fifth game uh, was the Armageddon game where Anish Giri chose to play as black and he had to draw and he delivered and yeah he got his first point so here are the scores and I hope you like it. If you like, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And uh, if you don't want to miss any other games, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.